You can watch that game on the March Madness Live app anywhere you are, anywhere you go. Download the March Madness Live app. You can see the stream. You can see the game. And, of course, we'll have it all wrapped up for you on Monday night as our coverage continues from the Final Four here in New Orleans. Caleb, this question is for you. Yesterday you told me that you came to Carolina for these type of moments. You was recruited by Duke, but you said they were the other side now. You came in with a little bit over 30 seconds left, hit the dagger three. What does this moment mean to you, first off, and how do you feel about the championship game tomorrow night? You know, it means everything to me. Uh, I, I couldn't do it without my guys and, and my coaches, and so um, I give all my credit to them. Uh, they put me in position, and, you know, it was a team effort. And so uh, just one game away from a national championship, what, what, what else can you, can you say? On the left side in the second row. Rafael Haynes from the three-point conversion. This is for um, Hubert Davis. First half, you all didn't shoot that well. But second half, you shot better from the three, from the field, and you held Duke to a lower percentage in the second half. What did you think changed? Well, I feel like in the first half, we were, we were settling for jump shots, especially when Mark Williams was out of the game. I felt like it was an opportunity for us to attack the basket. And when we started the game, and we just they weren't bad shots. I just felt like we could get better shots. Then we started penetrating and getting to the basket. And I've always said that we should dominate points in the paint. And if we do, that also puts us in a position to get fouled. And we're such a good free throw shooting team. And so in the second half, I felt like we worked inside out, whether it was post penetration. But the, you know, the other part is offensive rebound. I thought we were great getting second chance opportunities. And then from a defensive standpoint, our emphasis going into the game was to protect the paint. You know, at, in Durham, they had 52 points in the paint. At halftime, they had 26 of their 37 points in the paint. And so we just said, look, we've, we've got to do a good job of keeping them away from getting layups and dunks and make them make contested outside jump shots. These guys were terrific defensively, and I'm so proud of them. We're going to go right to the center of the room. You have a microphone there. Andrew Jones, Tar Heel Illustrated. This is for Caleb and Brady. They kind of hit a little spurt right out of the gate in the second half, went up seven, but then you guys hit them with a 13 nothing run. Brady, you hit a big three in the right corner there, and Caleb, you were doing your thing. What allowed you guys to have that run, and how do you think that kind of changed your mojo? Brady first, then Caleb. Hand the microphone two to your right, please. Uh, you know, it was, uh, it was our defense. Um, what we were doing on defensive end allowed us to get transition points, and a lot of those points of that 13 run came from running, transition layups, kicking it for three. You know, we, we were, when we, we got stops on the defensive end and controlled that, we played better on the offensive end. Yeah, like Coach, Coach said, uh, you know, we had to stop them in transition and, and all their points was getting uh, from the paint. So uh, once we stopped that and then we got out in transition because they weren't really a good transition team and we got whatever we wanted. In the center of the room, raise your hand, please. You have the mic already. Michael Co. WCHL Chapelboro, uh, Armando, this one's for you. How are you feeling? Uh, I feel amazing. I feel great. Better than ever. <laughs> That's an excellent response. Let's get the microphone to Jeff. Jeff, raise your hand, please, so we can see you. Jeff Borzello, ESPN. Uh, Hubert, obviously a ton of emotion after this game. You guys celebrated it pretty, pretty well on the court. How do you kind of put this in the rear view and, and get it ready for Monday? That's, that's easy. I mean, we're playing for a national championship. We, you know, one of the things that these guys have done a really good job at is celebrating a win, but also putting that aside and focusing on the tasks ahead of us. Um, after we played an unbelievable Baylor team, we were able to set our sights on UCLA, and after UCLA, St. Peter's, after Marquette, and, you know, I mean, it was just these guys have been – fantastic at uh, because you know I, I want them to celebrate tonight I, I just do you know this is a special moment for them this is a special moment for our program so I want them to enjoy themselves and so that's important but we have more than enough time to prepare for an unbelievable Kansas team and playing for the national championship there's if you're not motivated for that that's you shouldn't be playing in the second row center please raise your hand uh, Terrence Hatchett, Carolina Bliss, uh, Coach Davis, this is for you. You guys were a plus 15 from the three-point line. <clears throat> Was that a point of emphasis when you looked at the film and it came up the game plan for the game tonight? Well, you know, from an offensive standpoint, we have to make threes. You know, and, we, and uh, but the, the beauty for us is that we have a number of guys that can shoot threes, it's not just one three-point shooter. We've got a number of guys 
that can shoot the ball. The thing that I love about our shooters is not only can they shoot, they shoot good shots. And so our emphasis is to attack the basket. First and foremost, we want to feed the ball down to Armando. Plain and simple period at the end. We want him to dominate down low on the post, and I've always felt like working inside out is the way for successful offensive basketball, and that's the way that we're going to do it. And uh, tonight we took shots that we needed to take, and Caleb and RJ and Brady stepped up, and also Leakey stepped up and made shots from three, and it put us in a position to win. We're going toward the back of the room on the right, CL. CL Brown, Raleigh News and Observer. This is for Caleb. Uh, You've, you certainly had different games this year where you made big shots to help close out or the assist at Clemson to Brady. Coming down the stretch of this game, right before you made that three of 24 seconds, were, were you looking, were you putting that on your shoulder to make a play? And how did that play kind of open up for you? Uh, well, not nah, coach puts the ball in me or RJ hands and tells us to make a play. Uh, RJ and me have been doing that all, all season, and so whoever has the ball, uh, we, we both made great plays, and uh, it just happened to be in my hands, and so uh, I made the play, and then, you know, it, we came out on top. We're going to the front row toward the center. Zach. Zach Brazil of your post. Caleb, read your, you, Duke was your dream school growing up. What does it mean to to end their season and to beat them in the Final Four, you know, the place that never offered you a scholarship? Oh, that's false. Uh, my aunt, yeah, that's false, but. His dream school is North Carolina. Yeah, my dream school is North Carolina. living his dream. Yeah, He's <laughs> what he said. <laughs> let's keep Coach Davis's mic on at all times, and let's go up to the front on the right <laughs> for Dennis. Yeah, good play. <laughs> Uh, Dennis Dodd, CBS Sports. Hubert, no matter what happens Monday night, how will these two games four weeks apart be remembered in college basketball history and in Carolina history? That's, I appreciate your question, and, and, and it's a great question. But it doesn't help us for Monday. It just doesn't. And so when I talk about the noise and, and, and things that aren't beneficial to help us prepare, to help us practice and help us play. I think dwelling on the two wins against Duke doesn't help us against Kansas. So we put that in a box to think about over the summer. But right now is a day, is a, is a time of celebration and then focus on preparing ourselves to play for a national championship against Kansas. We're going to go to the left in the second row, but after this, we're looking for a question for R.J. Davis. Go ahead. Hi, Mark Myers. This question is for Hubert. What's it like to be the guy to hand the uh, all-time winningest coach his final loss? Again, that's, that's something that I've never thought about and would never think about. It's all I'm thinking about are these kids, these players. And I told them that um, how happy I am that I get a front row seat just to be able to, for them to go through this season and go through these experiences. It's a blessing for me. It's a privilege. It's an honor. Those are the things that I'm thinking about. You know, um, Coach K is unbelievable, and that team is the best team so far that we have played. And um, we just happen to make some more plays tonight. The next question is going to be to the right. Move up, please, two rows. It's going to be for Lane. But after this question, we're going to allow the North Carolina athletes to make their way to the locker room where they're going to have availability with North Carolina's SID. Steve Kirshner, Hall of Famer, is right here. He's going to administer that. Go ahead, Lane. All right, great. Well, this is a good transition. This can be for RJ, as requested, or anyone. But um, your coach said that early in the season, I think on the first day of practice, he put a picture of the Superdome in your locker room, which is a very strong way to set a tone with a first-year coach like that. You know, when you saw that, you know, did you think he was crazy? And what, what were you thinking of, you know, getting to this point way back then? RJ, first, please, then Armando, then you guys can take a walk down the hall. I mean, it's crazy to think about. Uh, it's definitely a surreal moment. Uh, it just shows how much confidence and belief he had in us beginning of the year. Uh, he told us, you know, we're going to be in this position, so we might as well just tell our parents to book their tickets now to New Orleans. So, uh, you know, looking back on it and now actually being in this position is something that, like, that I'll cherish forever. Um, it's definitely uh, a great feeling right now. Armando. Yeah, I mean, I would say our belief all year was just strong that we can get to this point. And, I mean, at some points, I don't know if it was belief or if it was us just being delusional, but... I mean, at every point of the season, we knew, like, if we 
came together as a team that we can get to the championship, and that's what we did. We'd like to thank Brady, Leakey, RJ, Caleb, and Armando for joining us here in the main interview room. They're going to head to that North Carolina locker room for some more questions and answers. We have a couple more minutes for Coach Davis before Duke comes in. Let's go down to the front on the right side of the room. Hubert, Scott Gleason with USA Today. You talked you know, earlier this week just about how playing with emotion is something you like to see with your team. When you see Caleb playing with a lot of emotion, pointing you know, into the stands and just really like showing that fire, can you talk about what that does to inject energy into the team and just overall what the emotions really do for your group? I do, I love, I don't think you can play this game absent of emotion. And I felt like at the beginning of the year, um, consistently we weren't playing with emotion and then that changed and um, I love seeing Caleb get into the game. I love seeing Brady and Armando, our bench. Um, as I said before, the last two, two and a half months, um, the togetherness of this team, the health of this team has been at an all-time high. We're so connected on and off the court, and it doesn't guarantee wins, but it does put yourself in a position to maybe do something special, and that's what these kids are doing right now. On the right side, just to the left of the aisle, Coach, all toward the back, Mike. Yeah, right there for Mike. Uh, now I forgot my question almost. Uh, Hubert, I, I wanted to ask you about the last play, uh, not, not the last play, the big play with Caleb uh, making the three. Was that, was that a, just a cycle into a late ball screen? Was that the initial call, but you guys wanted to get it to it late? Can you sort of explain how that developed, that he was able to hit that? Well, uh, our most consistent way against their set defense to be able to create shots was off ball screens. And so whether it was our guard shooting behind the screens, a three, or penetrating, getting into the lane, or Armando rolling to the basket, against Duke's defense and drawing Mark out, out away from the basket, that gave us the best chance to be able to score. And I remember in the huddle, I just, you know, and I told Coach Frederick, I said, you know, at the end of the day, our guys just need to be able to step up and make a play. And one of the things that I love about all of our guys is they're always willing to step up. I mean, Brady steps up and hits the threes. Leakey hit a couple threes. Armando comes back, sprains his ankle, he comes back in. RJ sustained us in the first half and is you know, distributing throughout the entire game. And then Caleb um, got off to a little slow start. I took him out, he came back in, and he's always been all year one of those guys that has just been willing to sh he wants that shot. He's actually looking for that shot. And very few guys in that situation are looking for that type of shot. Caleb is one of them, and he has the confidence to be able to knock it down. You can watch that game on the March Madness Live app. Anywhere you are, anywhere you go, download the March Madness Live app. You can see the stream. You can see the game. And, of course, we'll have it all wrapped up for you on Monday night as our coverage continues from the Final Four here in New Orleans.